Welcome to another production by the Millennium Mechanical Therapist. Your hosts, Dr. Joseph Gravino and Dr. Clay Case, are two physical therapists trying to treat health issues mechanically. Listen further for patient cases, guest videos, advantages and disadvantages of the way they practice, and much more. Thanks for tuning in today. Check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and at our website. We hope that you learn a lot from watching this video and you come back for more. Hello everybody, I am the Millennial Mechanical Therapist and today is part four of post-operative patients that respond to repeated movement testing or mechanical diagnosis and therapy. So previously till today, a little recap, you've had a couple patients with uh, shoulder surgeries or post-op shoulder surgery who've ended up responding to repeated movements later after their care has been prolonged for some period of time. The individual that we're seeing that we're going to talk about today is a patient who just underwent a well didn't just who just came to us from continued pain from a total knee replacement a year ago so the individual went through um the typical the typical you know physical therapy for a tnr um still had some you know end range movement losses not huge we're talking maybe 20 degrees, 15 degrees, um, had pain with end range flexion, but had a weird distribution of pain that went below the knee joint, but not to the ankle and above the knee joint and not to the hip. And they also on the opposite lower extremity had some posterior buttock and hip pain. The individual said that they believed that their uh, opposite limb injury or discomfort was due to uh, limping or favoring the other lower extremity due to the, the replacement um, and possibly so. So as usual we took her through a normal examination repeated movement exam and we found that she had weak knee extension um, no real spine symptoms or signs no uh, you know nothing saying reflex nothing reflexive came up no specific myotomal pattern of loss. Um, she had some intermittent numbness and tingling. So we screened her spine, and for her spine, we found that she we found that she had a huge loss of extension. Now, going into this, before we go further, the individual had almost no limitations at the knee, even being one year post-operative total knee replacement. They had minimal loss of, of knee flexion and end range pain not uncommon with the total knee replacement. However, the symptoms that the individual was dealing with was not common. In my, at least I have never seen someone who presented with such a clear cut pain above the knee, pain below the knee, some intermittent numbness and tingling will not go away. Nothing screaming spine either, but this individual did have pain with things like rising from sitting, prolonged walking, stairs nothing that screams spine nothing that doesn't scream extremity huge loss in extension and standing we brought her down to extension and lying where progressively she showed that she also had a loss even in the unweighted position and progressively as she keeps going farther into extension her symptoms abolished well centralized to the centralized to the low back she still had local knee pain but none of that covering above the knee below the knee and her ability to squat her ability to bend the knee she increased her range of motion and she had no pain um, in end range flexion of the knee again did this individual need a tnr was this individual maybe just given the wrong conservative care at some specific set point in time i don't know chicken before the egg egg all I know is that this individual being a weird presentation of post-op TNR when screening her spine easily, easily got better and improved function on day one. This person was, was fine, continued to get better. I think by week two she was going on vacation. She was confident. Um... Moral of the story is the same. 
don't forget to look at the spine. Don't forget to give these, don't, don't push your preconceived notions or your thoughts that this is, this is post-op, this should be quick. This, I, you know, the, oh, their pain seems, that's, that's common. Or I've never seen this, but it's a, it's a replacement. Give the individual the benefit of the doubt and allow them some time, give them some effort to see if repeated movement testing, prolonged static posture testing influences them of that joint, of the spine, give them the best ability that they can to get better faster. And even if it's a quarter better by day, you know, day two, day three, at least they're that much better faster or someone else wouldn't have given that to them. I don't know what else to say. We've seen some really good cases where these individuals who may have been mismanaged before or through life have had some situations arise on them who are typically look like a post-operative patient and yet responded to repeated movement testing. I mean, you should be doing this with everyone. You should be looking at this with everyone. You should be trying to get better with this with everyone so that these people can get out of your office and the people who truly need you in the chronic pain categories, and those who are slow uh, progressors that truly need your help, get the time and effort that they need. And these individuals who can quickly change their, their pain and improve their function can go on and live their lives. Thank you for paying attention to this. Look for the document that's going to have some of the similarities that I can compile between all these patients to hopefully give you guys some sort of clinical picture. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to you know ask us on Facebook. You can email us. It's on our website. Uh, stay tuned. As I always say, move your patients early, move them often, and move them to end range, my friends, because that's where the magic happens. We'll see you till next time.